Well, recently in Phoenix, Arizona, there came into existence a place which is a community center and jazz club education center for jazz, and it's called the Nash, and it was named in my honor, which is, I still have a hard time uh, believing, you know, usually that kind of thing happens after you're gone. <laughs> but um, I'm really, um, you know, honored to know that there's a place um, with the goal of educating young musicians and exposing young musicians to the music and also presenting uh, top level jazz musicians there in downtown Phoenix. And it was um, uh, kind of the, the, the brainchild of, a, of a, a gentleman named Herb Eli, who's uh, an attorney there in Phoenix and jazz lover, and his wife, Laureen. They're, they're members of, a, of an organization called Jazz in Arizona, or Jazz in Az. And um, they um, had the idea to, to create this place and asked me early on if, you know, they would, if, if I'd mind if they would name it for me or name it after me or whatever. And I, of course I said, of course, that sounds great. And as it came together, um, uh, the focus became how to not just present j jazz, but to uh, make sure that young people are able to have access to it. And that was important for me, being involved in education myself anyway. And um, so it's now in its second year of existence. Uh, we had the first anniversary um, in September of 2013. And as a matter of fact, uh, in 2012, the opening concert featured Cedar Walton, uh, Houston Person, Russell Malone, Christian McBride, and myself. And then I had my band, uh, which featured Rainey and Peter, earlier that year in 2012 in a fundraiser before it actually opened. So I've, I've been able to bring some of my friends and fellow musicians from New York to Arizona to, to perform for people there and also to kind of help uh, raise funds to continue to do the education work and things like that. So uh, then for the, second or for the first anniversary last year in 2013, I had uh, George Cables, George Mraz, Randy Brecker, and Javon Jackson join me. So I'm going to continue to do things to bring musicians from New York and elsewhere to Phoenix and um, give workshops, clinics, uh, teach private lessons and things like that. And then they're doing it there locally. There's local teachers and musicians who are doing it on a more ongoing basis. So. Uh, hopefully, this will be something that just continues to blossom and, and uh, stays intact and, and really establishes itself as a, as a, a place where um, the music is, is heard and learned and, and perpetuated you know, for a long time. So we're, we're really aiming to um, expose the music uh, to those who may not have any other avenue to learn about it. You know, maybe it's not at their school, or maybe they don't have a jazz band at their school, or, or access to lessons. And we're trying to make this be a center of where, if they want to learn about this music, this is somewhere they can come and and uh, they won't feel um, talked down to if they don't know. A certain thing about it already or uh, we're not gonna you know we're open to the fact that young people are um, into their own into the music that they like and we're not trying to put them down for that we just want to open them up to more you know what else is available and the history of the music and the great players and really just kind of get them to understand that it's musicianship on a high level first and that uh, then that will lead to being able to play this music on a high level, or any music on a high level. But we're really aiming it toward the, the music that comes out of this tradition, 
because it's not available many other places. Hi, I'm Lewis Nash, and for more interviews, go to jazztimes.com.